Good to have with us today, Maria Wolf of the Kramers. Maria, how you doing? I'm doing well today. Thank you, Robert. Let's talk about, before we get to the music of the Kramers and where we might be able to catch the Kramers, uh, got to find out about, you know, the health. Everybody good in this COVID-19 situation? Yes, thank you for asking. We have stayed well, which is such a, such a blessing from the Lord. We're hiding out in our home state of Illinois. Now, you're from what part of Illinois? Central Peoria area. Um, there was, back in the 90s, a group called the Encouragers, and I know Danny and D. Kramer were part of the Encouragers, and they became a, a duo after the fact, and I know they wrote a lot of music as well. Is there any kinship between your Kramers and those Kramers? There is not, but you are not the first one to ask that. In fact, when we travel around the country, we've heard that question a lot. All right. Well, had to clarify, make sure that uh, you, you're a separate group of Kramers. All right. Bring us back then. 25 years ago, I understand the ministry started. So kind of give us a background on who the Kramers are. My parents were married in 1995, Scott and Rachel Kramer, and they both accepted Christ later on in life. Dad was 23. Mom was 18 when they accepted Christ as Savior. And so when they got married, they felt the call to go into full-time music ministry together. And so as I was a little girl, I'm their firstborn. I remember my mom and dad traveling and singing at churches. And then my brother Weston was born. But then my brother was diagnosed with autism at the age of two. And so they focused more on a regional ministry and then led worship at our home church, Grace Presbyterian Church in Peoria for 12 years before we stepped out and went national as a group. Why was it Southern gospel? I mean, you've got a variety of, of Christian music. What laid the foundation for the Kramers to go Southern? It's funny you ask that because I wouldn't consider my family true Southern gospel. My mom has a Sandy Patty voice, and so she's considered inspirational. My dad is a worship leader by heart, and so I think we bring a lot of different styles and genres to a concert. I'm kind of the one that brings a little bit more of the Southern gospel flair because I love those roots. And really, if you go to a convention of gospel music, it's all based on the word and it's all lyrics that are just truth from the Lord. And so that's what really draws me to this genre. I'm so thankful to be a part of it. Well, then if, if the music influences were not Southern, with the exception of you, so was it just kind of a, a natural move based on the music or, or how did you, or, or is this more of a ministry that covers a variety of genres and Southern happens to be one of them? Both. So several years ago, I want to say back in 2010, my dad started a radio program called Good News Music Radio with Woody Wright. Woody Wright is one of the Gaither homecoming artists, and they did that radio program right out of Gaither Studios. And as that program began to grow, we became friends with many of the Gaither artists, and that is what led us to the National Quartet Convention, just with the radio program. And after I felt the calling to join my parents' ministry, I was 16 years old, I left public school, and I joined my parents, and we decided to travel around the country as a family, the Kramers. And so that's part of it. The other part is we do other events besides Southern Gospel. We do worship conferences around the country. We, my mom and I do a lot of women's events. And so it is kind of a multi-genre thing, but we, we love it all, any work that's for the Lord. Speaking of multiple events, talk about River Life. I understand that is something that you do host there in Peoria. Yes. River Life, it's the 25th year and not really sure what it's going to look like this year. <laughs> Our first cruise was supposed to be in June, but it, it's not going to happen. So we're going to just pray that the rest of the cruises can happen. But basically, it takes place on an 1800 style paddle wheel boat, triple decker with a big red wheel in the back. And it's an all you can eat buffet with delicious food beautiful sightseeing along the Illinois River. Illinois actually has high bluffs here in Peoria, so it's really beautiful. And then we do a gospel concert with our family, the Kramers, and it's an outreach event. People bring friends and family that normally wouldn't step into a church building, and so we're very thankful for all the ministry that's happened through River Life, and now people have come from all across the country, from Florida, Pennsylvania, Indiana. It's fun. It's really great. And I'm assuming, and we're going to talk about this a little bit later on, but if they want more information on River Life, they are going to go to your website? 
Yes, thekramersmusic.com. All right. You are one of the nominees for New Artist of the Year. This is a 25-year ministry, and, and now you're uh, vying for New Artist of the Year. So obviously there's some folks just being introduced to the Kramers. Why is it taking 25 years to hear the great music of the Kramers? Yes, it is very funny being considered. I mean, I'm very grateful to be nominated and very honored that people would even think of our family. But our family is very new to the gospel music world. The ministry that my parents started, Hands of Love Ministry, has been around for 25 years. But as a family, we just started traveling full time in 2014. So we're still fairly new. This is our sixth year as a family in music ministry. And we're still getting to know so many people around the country. And our second album just came out this year. So we're still very new as a family. Now, I, my story is I was away from gospel music for about 10 years, so came back in the last two. So is Water Walker your first release to radio nationally, or did I miss something beforehand? Well, it's our first original release to radio. Our, our first family CD, we chose to do a classic CD with some hymns so that people could get to know our sound while listening to songs that were familiar to them. So we released Look For Me, which is an old Goodman song that's beautiful. And so, but this is our first original song to our family. All right, who wrote the song? And give me the background on Water Walker. Yes, Water Walker was written by Rachel McCutcheon and Wendy Ferguson, two phenomenal songwriters. And we first heard this song. Wayne Hahn is the gentleman who produced our CD. And he sent us this demo to consider. And when my dad and I first heard it, we immediately thought, wow, this is such a fun song. It would be really fun to do at the National Quartet Convention. We would love to add this to our concerts. But then as we started singing it, it really has a deep ministry impact. And the words are all about stepping out in faith and trusting in the Lord as he gives us challenges that grow our faith muscles. And if there's a song that's really encouraged me during this pandemic, it's been Water Walker. I haven't been able to sing out in a concert since March 15th, and I've been sitting at home a lot, and some mornings I just wake up and I need to be reminded of those lyrics that God's just making me a water walker. Well, and you kind of answer the next question in, in that, has it been an exercise in faith that you put a song out, your first original, to radio, and then here comes a pandemic that kind of disrupts the flow of the promotional aspect of getting people familiar with the Kramers? Oh, it's been a huge faith building experience. I think even more than just a promotional standpoint, just a test in my personal life. I'm a new time mom and raising a child in a world that's so broken is heartbreaking at times. But at the same time, I have to remind myself that my life and her life and all of our lives are in the palm of God's hands and not in anybody else's hands. And so that brings me peace. But yes, we've, we've had moments of discouragement, just thinking, Lord, why did you allow this to happen? And I know it's not a surprise to you, but I'm just excited, Lord, for the day when I have another opportunity to tell people about you from a platform. And so we just hope that we get more opportunities, but if the Lord chooses to come home today or come get me, that's even better. So... <laughs> Tell us about a project for the Kramers. What goes into the mindset, the selection of songs? How do you determine? I'm assuming you've got 40, 50 songs that you narrow down to about 10 or 12. So how do you do that? Well, you're close, but it's about 200 songs. <laughs> so it's very overwhelming. We want to give every songwriter, we receive all of our music through our producer just to listen to for demos. And so we want to give them all our ear and really give them the chance to listen to their song. And there's so many amazing songs, but it's just picking the ones that fit our hearts and our ministry the best. And so we picked nine songs for this project and a lot of prayer went into it. And really every single song just has a really deep meaning and it's encouraging. And one of the songs was even written by my dad and we just could have never known it. It's called the hope of all tomorrows. And we always wondered, Lord, why is it taking a little bit longer for this project to be released and to be finished? And it's because the Lord wanted it to be released during a pandemic. And so the hope of all tomorrows is found in him today. 
Where a family is concerned when you go through a process of determining what songs to sing, and especially as you mentioned previously, that there are different influences and genres of music influencing your styles, uh, and you're always going to have at least some differing opinions. How do you resolve those? <laughs> yes, I know. People always ask, you guys get along all the time, don't you? And I say, oh, yes, you believe that, right? <laughs> well, we actually really enjoy going through the songs and sharing our opinions and being open-minded. That's really important as a family to just be open to listening to everybody. And it was really easy when it came down to the choice of who's going to sing this song. It was just almost obvious. Like this song was meant for your voice. The song was meant for your voice. And we were on our way to the studio and I was sitting up front in our bus with the ukulele picking all the keys last minute <laughs> to go to the studio. So we do, we have a lot of fun with it. Occasionally we'll have a disagreement, but it gets resolved really quickly. You sing, you speak as well. Uh, if you had to leave one or the other, the music or the speaking and ministering from a, a conference standpoint, which of the two would you let go? Woo! That's really tough. Um, I, I would say I would let go of speaking only because I feel like I can accomplish that through song. And when God gives you a gift, which I'm very thankful he gave me the gift of music, I don't take that lightly. I take it very seriously. And every opportunity that I'm given to open my, my voice, my mouth in song, I want it to be for the glory of the Lord. And so I feel like I can accomplish both the message and the song in one with singing. Maria, it's been great to talk with you. Before we go, though, I want to give our listeners, our viewers, an opportunity to find out how they can learn more about the Kramers, get your music, find out where you're going to be. What's the best sources? Our website, thekramersmusic.com, and Kramers is spelled with a K. And then we are on Facebook and Instagram at the Kramers Music. And then we're on iTunes and all digital platforms for downloading. Our new CD is entitled The Hope of All Tomorrows. And the brand new song, Water Walker. Great song from the Kramers. Maria, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, Robert. It's been a pleasure.